So, I decided to do a new playthrough of Elden Ring. Um, I thought I'd make this be a bit more optimized. The big thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to wait until after I take care of everything in the Weeping Peninsula to go to um, Stormvale Castle. So, um, this guy has the same name as in my previous attempts at trying to do a lot of play of this. I named him Damien. And um, now I'm just going to exit out of here. I chose the Vagabond because I like how he has some pretty balanced stats. Except for his Arcane. His Arcane is like pathetically low, but that's like the only low stat on here. Strength and Intelligence, although they're both below... I mean, not Strength and Intelligence. Faith and Intelligence, although they're both below 10. With one point in each, I can use the basic magic. So, um... Just wanted to show this. I had already beaten the um, tutorial area. It's like this great I'm gonna go talk to Var. Oh, yes. Tarnished, are we? Come to the lands between for the Elden Ring? Hmm? Of course you have. No shame in it. Unfortunately for you, however, you are maidenless. Without guidance, without the strength of runes, and without an invitation to the round table hold, you are fated, it seems, to die in obscurity. Luckily for you, however, there is one shining ray of hope for even the maidenless, me, Vare. Take care to listen. Are you familiar with grace, the golden light that gives life to you tarnished? You may also behold its golden rays pointing in a particular direction at times. That is the guidance of grace, the path that a tarnished must travel. Hmm, indeed. Grace's guidance holds the answers. It will lead you tarnished to the path you are meant to follow, even if it leads you to your grave. Grace's guidance will reveal the path forward to Castle Stormvale. Over on the cliff, the home of the decrepit demigod, Godric the Grafted. It's time you set off, I should think, to Castle Stormvale. If you seek the Elden Ring, maidenless as you are. Okay, I think that's it for Vary's dialogue. Um, so he tells us to go venture over to Castle Stormvale. Before I do that, though, I'm going to um, get some shit from a merchant that's close to here on a beach. Easiest way to get to that beach is to just um, go down here. There's a cliff that uh, you can drop down. You should be able to drop down and just climb with no problem. There are also some birds here. There are two kinds of birds you can find in the lands between. Oh my, bit of a lag there. So there are eagles, and there are... There are eagles, and there are like these, um, gulls. So from the eagles, if you were to, um, kill them, you could get flight pinions, and you can also get, um, four-toed, um, whoopsie, you could also get an item called, uh, the four-toed foul foot. It's pretty good. Um, the foul foot is used to make this game's equivalent of the, um, gold coins, uh, or the gold and silver coins from Dark Souls. So, uh, these birds here are also a good way of getting those if you can kill them in time. You can get plenty of flight pinions from them. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. It just feels wrong killing the birds like this. It feels wrong that the main crafting item that you can find to craft shit are, um, bones. I feel like sticks would have made more sense, but whatever. Um, anyway, there's a, um, there's a merchant here. Before I talk to him, I'm going to, um, pop a grace site that's in a cave close to here. So, let's go get it. Um, 
It's over by where those, um, those, like, hyena men are. These are demi-humans. They're hostile. Thankfully, they're pretty easy to take out. A few hits with my, uh, straight sword are enough to kill them. Let's see what these brought. Okay, glass shard and a rune fragment. You can also get the weapons that these guys use off of them. The ones that wield a curved sword, you can get it, and it's the, um, Falchion. Pretty good weapon. So, from that merchant over there, the only thing I'm really interested in getting is a, um, bow that he has. He sells a short bow. And if you're like me and pick the Vagabond, but you want something that can allow you to fight at range, the short bow is a good option. I believe I have enough grace to get it. Let's check. Hmm. Voice is that dark. Where is the exit? Is it up here? I believe. Yeah, it's up there. Okay. Yeah, this place is dark. There are some items you can get that help you um, see in the dark. One of them is a torch that you can get from a merchant in a cathedral. Another one is a is a lantern that you can get in um, in another section of a uh, Lingrave. So that's good. So this merchant here. What do you need? I don't want any trouble. He doesn't want any trouble. The reason why is because of the demi-humans here are hostile, but, um... He sells some pretty good weapons. He sells uh, the club and the shortbow. For right now, I'm going to go with the shortbow. I'm going to buy as many arrows. Oh, that's not a lot of arrows. Never mind. So, anyway, the good thing about Grace is that the moment that you unlock a checkpoint, you can just fast travel to it. So, I recommend unlocking that first. Just so that you can get some good weapons. The short bow is a very good weapon to have in the early game. It um, lets you snipe enemies from a distance. It doesn't let you hit as far as the um, longbow, but it does work. So there's a boss over there. I'm not going to bother with him. Um, let's see over here. There are some uh, sheep. You could try killing them to get their remains. The big thing you can get from them are their bones. More of it as it is... Um, Beast bones are useful for crafting. There's a boss there called the Tree Sentinel. Sentinel, not gonna bother with him. It's not worth it. He can uh, basically one-shot you. He's incredibly powerful at this point in the game. So over here is the Church of Eli or Church of the Ellie. Not exactly sure what the proper pronunciation is. So from there you got a golden rune. Here's the Church of Ellie, or... Yeah, I think it's Ellie. Or Ellie. Um... This, um, handful here is a smithing stone, and this guy is... You're a tarnished. I can see it. And I can also see... That you're not after my throat. Then why not purchase a little something? I am Kale. Purveyor of fine goods. Well, this is Kale. He sells some shit. The only thing I would recommend you get from him right now are these cracked pots, if you can if you can uh, scrounge up enough uh, runes to get them, and this crafting kit, so that you can craft items. Goodbye for now. I do have that tier two rune. I could pop. I could try popping it. That should get me enough. Yeah, four hundred. That's enough for the crafting kit. Excellent. What is it? So let's purchase from him the crafting kit. He also sells these cookbooks. They let you make things like bone arrows, fletched bone arrows. Um, this one here lets you make glowstones. This one lets you make um, holy water. Goodbye. Pretty good. There's also the torch. I think I should get it. There's an item that I can get later that um, basically makes the torch useless in comparison. So, let's equip that torch. And let's keep on venturing. Past this forest, there's a, um, you can see it right here on the map. These, like, Hodel Monolith statues, they're basically points where, they're like guide points where you can get maps. And they're very useful. Over here we got the main enemy of the game, the, um, Lord Sworn Knights. Oh, I'm sorry, the Godric Soldiers. They're... Rather tough, but they're pretty easy to deal with if you have the right weapon. Um, the Vagabond Short Sword is a good weapon to use against them. The um, 
swordsmen, or rather the warriors, um, scimitars are also pretty okay. Um, since these are dudes in armor, they're weak to pierce. So I'm not worried about that. Got these Kukris, and let's go antagonize this dude. There are some dungeons here, but I'm not going to take care of them just yet. I'm just going to pop the checkpoint for that dungeon. Mainly because this dungeon here provides a pretty good checkpoint where you can reliably farm these soldiers. So I would recommend unlocking it for that purpose. Grove side cave. What you can do here is um, you can rest at the grace and then you can um, refight those soldiers. So you just come over here. There are Godric soldiers here. You kill them, you can get their equipment, and their equipment is honestly pretty good. Their Sir coat looks nice, it has about the same defense as a Vagabond's armor, so... If you're not a Vagabond, but still want to run around with some tough armor, the, um... The, uh... The Tree and Beast Sir coat, Which is the name of the, um, armor that they have on. It's pretty useful. So far, these guys didn't drop anything. It's not the end of the world if they don't drop anything. It's a bit unfortunate, but it's totally manageable. Um, here, there are scarab beetles here. They come in three types. There are red scarabs, blue scarabs, and white scarabs. The um, blue scarabs, if you kill them, they drop the um, they drop um, a recharge for the flask of tears. So do the, um, blue scarabs. The only real difference is the kind of, um, recharge that they drop. So the blue scarab drops a recharge to the cerulean tears, and red drops a recharge for the crimson tears, so that's pretty good. This may be a bit dicey. Perhaps I should equip the, uh... No, I think I'll be fine. The trick to this area is to kill as many of the soldiers as you can, and um, their commander, who is called the uh, Godric Knight, will come after you after you kill enough of these uh, soldiers. Big one you want to focus on killing is this one here that has the bugle. If he blows it, it will alert all of the um, soldiers in the area to your presence. This guy here is the knight. He's honestly the real threat. My advice for taking him out is to um, focus on using the uh, square off ability from your straight sword. Take him out easily. So the good thing about square off is that it gives you a pretty healthy amount of poise. And it does good guard damage and good damage damage to your enemies. Yeah, these Godric soldiers are dangerous if you let them gang up on you. So my recommendation would be try to take them out either in small groups or one at a time. The tower shield is pretty dangerous. You're asking the enemy here. The most dangerous are the dogs. Even though this one here isn't a dog, the dogs in this area are wolfhounds, but these are just straight-up wolves. Ah, the boar pick. That's a pretty good weapon for this point. It's on um, a hammer. Might as well equip it. Let's me do strike damage. Even though it has a beaked head, it should be doing pierce damage, but whatever. Hammers are pretty useful in the early game because a lot of the enemies you'll find are dudes in armor. And um, in here is a pretty useful item. Um, an Ash of War, Storm Stomp, and more importantly, the Whetstone Knife. So the way that the Whetstone Knife works is it lets you apply Ashes of War to your weapons. And the Ashes of War in this game facilitate the job of both the Weapon Art and the Infusion. Over here we have a map of one grave, pretty good. Let's uh, take care of this dude in armor. I'm gonna rest up, not at that grace there, but at a grace near it. But right now I'm just going to activate that grace. These uh, caravans are also insanely useful, they have weapons. For example, this one here has a great sword. Pretty good weapon. 
I may run around with it for the majority of the run. That's gonna give me a heavy equip load. Um, I'm still heavy, so I'm gonna have to remove my uh, shield. The mid roll, not a problem. As I wouldn't be able to use this with one hand at the moment anyway, so. I'm perfectly content with um, having to wield this in both hands in order to move properly. So, to two-hand a weapon, you press triangle. And you press one of the uh, bumpers to um, change the weapon. So, right bumper makes you dual wield the weapon in your right hand, and left bumper makes you dual wield the weapon in your left hand. Oh, he dropped his greaves. Nice. And some bolts. Bolts will come in handy. Especially later, when, um, I find a good prop, though. You can find one in an area called the, um, Round Table Hold. To, um, access it, you're going to need some, uh, some stone keys. This is why I recommend getting the stone keys. The stone sword keys, I should say. Every chance you have to get them. So, um, now I have the map of one grave available. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to run until I get a checkpoint that's down here. And then I'm going to go up to reach this area called the um, Church of America. The uh, Third Church of America, I believe. The reason why is because there's a good item there called uh, the Flask of Wondrous Physique. Basically gives you buffs whenever you pop it. Um... I could get the horse now, but um, I'll wait until I'm at the grace down here to get the horse. It's going to be a bit of an uphill battle because I don't have a lot of um, health recharges, but I'll manage. Anyway, um, around here are some noblemen. They're not that tough. You can easily kill them with your standard sword. And um, as you can see here, there are skulls all over the place. Some of the skulls you'll find are glowing. Those uh, glowing skulls have runes in them. They usually only have the tier 1 rune, which is not stellar. Better than nothing, but it's not great. Um, anyway. Around here, there are some pretty powerful enemies. There's a Caden Knight there. The Caden Knight is armed with a, um... Is, um, armed with a curved sword. And they hit pretty tough. Foot Soldier 3s are good. Um, I believe after killing the Caden Knight, I'll get a um, recharge of my Flask, so that's useful. Um, over here is a Gold Scarab. I would recommend you take these out ASAP. They uh, draw Ashes of War upon death. So this one gets me Determination. That one is basically a buff. And with the Caden Knight, my recommendation, especially with the ones on horseback, is to fight them with the Great Sword. Because the Great Sword causes um, X1 posture damage to the horse, while causing decent damage to the knight. And as you saw there, I got some Blast Free Charges, which are useful. Down here leads a path to a merchant after a boss fight. I may go there, but not right at this very moment. Again, my first priority is to go down to. Where those ruins are. And over here we have smoldering butterflies. Those come in handy for crafting. The butterflies can be used to make fire bombs. So that's excellent. Now over here you're going to be facing some uh, giants. They're referred to as trolls, but I sometimes fall into the trap of calling them giants because of their massive size. Well anyway, with these unnoblemen, they're not much of a threat. Some of them don't even have proper weapons. Those that do don't really use them properly, so it's pretty easy to take care of them. Um, and now, over here with these trolls, my recommendation would be to um, avoid them for right now and focus on the enemies behind them. There's like an entire caravan of enemies, including a Caden Knight, some Godric soldiers, and some wandering nobles. Knights on their own are easy enough to deal with. You just have to kill the horse and then the horseman. You can get their weapon and their armor, it's actually pretty good. Oh, 
Ha! Ah, that old man dropped something. Let's see what it is. Relic fruit. Eh. The old man... The old men in this area, I should say. The ones with the uh, robes and the little crowns on. Oh, I don't think crown would be appropriate. Maybe more of a diadem. Those use sorceries, and you can get their sorcery staff from them as a drop. I got their coat and their hood, so that's nice. That's a pretty good white armor. Got a rune fragment and some relic fruits. I may try to take care of those, um... Trolls. The ones that are bound are pretty easy to deal with. So with these trolls, easy way to take them out is to attack their legs and to um, hit them twice with a heavy attack of your weapon because that breaks their poise. Good thing about the Lord's Sworn Greatsword. It deals higher critical damage than your standard greatsword. All the Lord's Sworn weapons have that buff. So while he's um, growling, back himself up, just jump across here. Yeah, I was trying to get critical, but that didn't work. Um, doesn't matter because he's dead. You got 1,000 runes for killing these guys, which is pretty good. Ah, uh, there we go. He stomped on me, but that didn't stop me from attacking him. There we go. Two hits with a two charged heavy attacks with a heavy weapon is all you really need to break their to break their uh, stance. Got another flask recharge, excellent. And I also got a um Got some pretty good souls. Over here we have a great axe. I can't use it just yet, but um I will hold on to it. So over here are the um over here are some ruins. I think they're called the waypoint ruins. They're not all that important to take care of. I would recommend holding off on that for the moment because, well, got another rune fragment from that nobleman. Um, the main reason why is because I don't have anything that I can use to even cast sorceries at the moment, so. Not gonna be worth it. Um, over there's a Kaden Knight. He, if you ask me, is a real threat, not the Abdodged Soldier here. Thankfully, he doesn't have infinite poise, so you can easily break his uh, guard with a few well-timed hits with this greatsword, so that's good. The ones on horseback are honestly easier to deal with using a greatsword. So look at that smoldering butterfly in that body. Herbs and rune fragments for these noblemen, okay. Go over here. There should be another Kaden Knight on horseback. Ah, yes, there are mushrooms here. So mushrooms can be used to craft explosives using um, those enchanted urns that you can buy from merchants like Kali. They're pretty useful. You can basically stuff shit inside of those urns and use them as bombs. The only negative about using them that way is that the um, urn itself will... It's kind of slow. But the good thing about the um, enchanted urns is that when they break, they reform and enter your inventory as crafting item again, so they're reusable. Another Caden Knight that's uh, knocking over. Take him out. Hopefully, I get his armor as a drop because his armor looks pretty good. Oh, I got a Glintstone Staff from uh, that guy. That's good. Windstone Staff is the most basic staff you can get. It's actually a relatively rare drop from these guys. But the fact that I was able to get one so quickly is pretty good. There's a Grace here, so might as well pop it. Um, I could try running back, but um, 
I would risk dying, or rather I could risk resting at the grace and then trying to kill all the enemies here, but then I'd risk um, dying. Not worth it. Okay, let's go. Let's try and hope the war pick does against these guys. Don't have enough intelligence to use this staff yet, but um, I'm literally one point away, so that's good. Um, if you're a vagabond like me, I would recommend getting at least some glintstone sorceries. Also, if you click in the uh, left stick, the stick that you use to move, you can um, move with um, adequate stealth, which is useful. Really and this place has a lot of um, sheep, which are good for killing to get their materials. And there's also a shit ton of uh, demi-humans. Fighting uh, Godric soldiers in this area, so. You can also use that to your advantage. Looks like these dummy humans are caught in some kind of frenzy. Sadly, the moment that you enter the fray, you become uh, priority target number one, so. You best understand that before you get into a fight here. So this place is actually a pretty good area to uh, farm the demi-human's uh, weapons. Let's see if I got them. Okay, he's down. Looks like these demi-humans are in some kind of frenzy. Because of their red eyes. I could risk dying. Ah, damn it, forget risk, I have died. Okay. Not the end of the world. Um, to get to that other checkpoint, or rather, to get over to where the Church of Marika is, that has the uh, Flask of Physique. Oh, yeah, that was the Roomba. Okay, well, anyway. I'm gonna go back over to where those uh, demi humans and uh, Gajic soldiers were fighting. Just to reclaim my lost uh, runes. So there are some sheep here. Killing them is a good way of getting uh, beast bones and meat for crafting. Um, don't really have anything that I can use to fight at range properly. Let's take care of some of these enemies. It looks like they're no longer in a friend's view, so that's good. This is the moment I get into the fight, I'm target number one. Let's see, glass shard here, not very important. Oh, I got his gauntlets, nice. I think I already got a copy of his gauntlets, so that's not very important. Godric Soldier is dead, now let's focus on the Demi-Humans. They did some kind of war cry there to work themselves off into a frenzy, it looks like, so... Thankfully these guys don't have the red eyes anymore, so that's easy enough. Glad I got the war pick early, that comes in handy. And there's the surcoat, and I got a glowstone from that, um, demi-human, or demi-human, so that's useful. My runes are over there, so let's go get them. All 6,000 of them. This one, I got more. I don't think I did, though. So, um, on the upper path here, I'm going to run into some guy who goes by Kenneth Height. He'll come in some handy, but, um, first, I'm going to go talk with, um... With uh, Melina, and get a um, and get a very useful companion for this journey. Bird here, let's take him out. A slumbering egg. That's um horrifying. I think the lore behind it is that everything in the lands between, because of the um, rune of death being shattered resulted in the area being just completely and totally like discombobulated everything is like thrown out of whack that's 
some more beast bones. That'll come in handy for making daggers. Got another beast bone. That's good. Um, now where is... Well, I'm gonna go back to the Agio Lake. Just at the uh, Grace site. So I can rest up and trigger a cutscene. Greetings, traveler from beyond the fog. I am Melina. I offer you an accord. Have you heard of the Finger Maidens? They serve the Two Fingers, offering guidance and aid to the Tarnished. But you, I am afraid, are Maidenless. I can play the role of Maiden, turning runes into strength to aid you in your search for the Elden Ring. You need only take me with you to the foot of the Erd Tree. Then it's settled. Summon me by grace to turn runes into strength. Ah, another matter. I bequeath to you this ring. Use it to traverse great distances. It will summon a spectral steed named Torrent. Torrent has chosen you. Treat him with respect. So, okay, I decided to pass the time until morning, and, um, now with that whistle, let's, um, put down our hotbar. I'm gonna put that down on, um, number one, or right around the bottom. Basically, the way the hotbar works is when you press and hold, um, is when you press, actually, now I want to put that on the other one, but it's on the bottom one. So the way that the hotbar works is when you press and hold triangle, you can, or in my case would be the Y button since I'm playing this with an Xbox controller. You have four different items and if you press down, you can use the spectral steed whistle and summon torrent. He's uh, very good for this area. I'm going to use it to make my way over to, um, to make my way past to the, um, the bridge here make my way over to the Weeping Peninsula. I recommend going here early more than anything just to get a um to get access to some merchants and some good items. There's a dungeon you can take here, but I'm not going to um go there yet. Um, over here is a place called the Bridge of Sacrifice. Now that I'm here on the Weeping Peninsula I'm gonna pop this um Race. I don't know if those gods of soldiers are still coming after me, but, um, yeah. It's pretty easy to deal with the enemies here once you, um, once you, uh, run across with Torrent. The enemies here are tough, but, um, Might as well show you a weapon art for the uh, hammer. It's literally just a kick.
Uh, might as well get all the items here. Um, so on this body, close to the ballista, you'll get a stone sword key. This uh, guy over here, the ballista, can be killed relatively easily, and the ballista can be damaged and broken, but um, it's not vital. Three smithing stone threes, that's good. Or smithing stone ones, I should say, that's very good. Or it's worn bolts. That's stronger than your standard bolts. Still don't have a crossbow for this yet. There's a merchant that sells a crossbow. Okay, he's down. Is that it for the soldiers here? I believe so. Um, that looks like just a normal item, so I'm not worried about that. Um, now for the Weeping Peninsula, I'm just going to run past everything here. I'm also going to get an item. I'm not going to chat with that woman yet. Um, she has a quest line where you um, basically go to the castle and deliver a message to her father. There's basically been a, has an uprising in the area. And um, her father stays in the castle to fight the enemies off. And from what I've seen of that quest line, after you give the message to her father, she murdered. She's just like straight up murdered. And then it sends her father like past the brink. You find him later on, he's like fully antagonistic and goes crazy. Fucking dog. The best time to hit the dogs, I would say, is if you have a shield up. Put your shield up, the dogs will try to bite you, but they'll end up biting the shield. At which point you can make a quick um, retaliation. And over here we have a Morning Star. It's a very good weapon. It's a hammer that deals bleed. Pretty useful. Living Stone 2 here. Not all that interested in it, to be honest. Rune Fragment here. A, um. A Scarab Beetle. A white one are the ones that you should prioritize, in my opinion. The uh, white ones can drop, um... can drop either upgrade materials or ashes of war. So if you ever see a white scarab beetle, prioritize killing that one, because um, the items you got from it are pretty useful. Another grace right up here, that leads to a tower I'm not all that interested in. For the time being, I'll come back there later. And um, over here is another merchant. No selling. So from him, you could get a crossbow, which is very useful. You could also get some iron and scale armor. He also sells kukris, which are pretty useful. And um, cracked pot, which is good. I'll buy one from him. And he also sells a stone key, so I would prioritize getting that. Now it's horned, I'm just going to run. Like my ass is on fire. Pass this place over to that um to that um waypoint because there is another map here. There we go. Map the Weeping Peninsula. There's also going to be a giant golem that's going to shoot at us with arrows. Um it's only gonna be a real problem when you try to get to the castle. Game things in combat, wonderful. Well, anyway, the uh, way that I want to go is up here. Uh, first thing I want to do is I want to rest up. That'll reset the world state and keep me from... and get me out of combat, but it will also recharge my flasks. So let's do that. It's already been 40 minutes, so I might as well do more of this next time. <laughs>